Hi everybody, it's Miss T from the Children's Library of the Plainfield Public Library. Thank you for coming for another story time today. Today we'll be reading from the book Barefoot Escape on the Underground Railroad, written by Pamela Duncan Edwards and illustrated by Henry Cole. The barefoot didn't see the eyes watching him as he ran onto the overgrown pathway. His breath came in great gasp. In the hours since he had run from the plantation, he had traveled faster and farther than ever in his life. He was fearful of what lied before him. He was terrified of what lay ahead. The Hamron's keen eyes had spotted the barefoot moving furtively toward the pathway. The Hamron's warning cry had been a signal to the other animals. They had seen many bare feet along their pathway. And they had seen some of them being led away in ropes by the heavy boots. The barefoot stopped and leaned wearily against the trunk of a lob lolly pine. He raised the bottle to his lips. It was empty and no water flowed to his mouth. Then from a few feet away came the urgent croaking of a frog. It sang out his message into the night. Fresh water, fresh water. The barefoot moved toward the sound and drank deeply. Looking back along the pathway, the barefoot made a decision. He sank down in the tall marsh grass, his head on his arms. There was a rushing sound. His heart pounding, the barefoot slowly raised his head and saw a white-footed mouse nibbling a wild berry. The white-footed mouse scurried away as the barefoot reached for a handful of berries, stuffing them into his mouth with a frantic hunger. From the branches of the cherry tree, a mockingbird began to sing. Looking up at the tree, the barefoot watched the squirrel disappearing into his nest of twigs and leaves. With an exhausted sigh, the barefoot pulled a thick blanket of leaves over himself. He closed his eyes and rested. But the heron Standing sentinel broke the silence. His warning cry echoed along the pathway. The heavy boots were crossing in on their prey. It was too late for the barefoot to find safety. Loud voices and tramping feet grew nearer. We'll get him, cried a voice. He'll soon be back where he belongs, laughed another. One of the heavy boots kicked at a rock in his path. Suddenly, out of the grass rose an army of mosquitoes. The heavy boots stopped within inches where the bent foot lay. Dozens of mosquitoes attacked biting hands and faces and through clothing. The heavy boots moved away from the marsh grass, slapping and cursing. Ahead of them, a shape darted across the pathway. A cracking of branches brought cries of, there he is, 
as the heavy boots crashed their way into the thick undergrowth. They cursed again and slashed their green brer and poison ivy as the deer led them farther and farther away from where the barefoot lay trembling. The mosquitoes returned to their hideaways amid the grass. The mockingbird sang again. The barefoot looked at his body in awe. Not one mosquito bite was to be seen. Hidden along the path where the animals watched the barefoot, he walked straighter than before, knowing that he had eluded his pursuit. The pathway opened out to a wider area. Trees had been felled and logs stacked as if for fire. Standing a little way off was a house. The animals heard a quick intake of the barefoot breath. Did this house represent safety or danger? The barefoot strained to see the house, but the moon remained behind thick clouds. Then out from the trees flew firefly after firefly. Their tiny lanterns sparkled and flashed as the barefoot moved silently forward. His eyes suddenly made out the shape of a quilt hanging in front of the house. This was the signal of welcome for which the barefoot had been hoping. As he reached the quilt, a door opened and a warm light flooded through. With wonder on his face, the barefoot glanced back at the pathway he had traveled. He slipped through the door, the noises of the animals following him. To the barefoot's ears, the sounds were a salute to courage. Silence fell again along the pathway, and the animals slept. But through their dreams, the heron's cry once again screamed a warning. Another barefoot was approaching. story is called Barefoot, Escape on the Underground Railroad, written by Pamela Duncan Edwards and illustrated by Henry Cole. Now that signal that the barefoot was looking for was, tall, was called a talking quilt. Now in the history of slavery, as it is said, at the end were courageous men, women, and children who made their escape out of slavery into freedom. But they also received help. Now, there were friends to those who escaped, or as it was said, stole themselves away. They couldn't say it outright that they were friends, but instead through artistry and through uh, in being ingenious, lots of folks indicated they were friends by what is known as talking quilts. So, these are some of the patterns that were familiar. So, for example, this one meant that you were at the crossroads and to board a boat that would take you. Next stop was Canada to Freedom. This pattern was called a log cabin. And it meant congratulations, you found friends who are friends of the slave. Now, I just want you to imagine yourself as the barefoot or imagine yourself as making a quilt. 
would you be a friend? And if you saw this as barefoot, would that mean danger or friendship? You said friendship is correct. That pattern is called a log cabin. And congratulations, you reached a safe house and you're among friends. So I just want you to think about that, that you can show your friendship in many different ways. And just like days of old, there were folks who were friends who were very ingenious, who helped other courageous people in their quest for freedom. Thank you so much for coming in and stopping in for another story time. I want you to be inspired, be a friend to somebody who needs it, and thank you so much again. Until we read again, be safe. So long for now and be inspired. Happy Black History Month.